Hello Vinyl Community, this is Randy. Today I'm going to do a video about a record that I've listened to as much as any other record I've listened to over the past 30 years. Maxine Sullivan sings the music of Julie Stein. This is Maxine Sullivan singing with the accompaniment of the Keith Ingham Sextet. This album was produced in 1987. I first came across this album in 1990. I had been wanting to listen to more jazz music and also to become more familiar with the Great American Songbook. Uh, when I say the Great American Songbook, I think that I am uh, talking about music by uh, uh, Johnny Mercer, Hoagie Carmichael, Cole Porter, Irving Berlin, Jerome Kern, uh, George Gershwin, Richard Rogers, Harold Arlen. Uh, I think that uh, <clears throat> Julie Stein fits into that category. I first got this album when I was in a checkout line at a supermarket and they had a, a bin there of $2 tapes and so I was looking through that and I found that one, found this one, and it seemed to fit the bill really well for what I was looking for. It is a uh, jazz accompaniment. Uh, there's not any free jazz in here or anything. There's not a whole lot of improvisation, but it's, it's definitely a jazz accompaniment. And uh, Maxine's vocal style is just wonderful. I bought this tape and stuck it in my car. I listened to it occasionally. I, I found myself listening to it more and more. I would listen to it when I was going to sleep at night. It's, it's very relaxing. But it, it is also extremely engaging, and uh, I did find myself listening to it more and more. Uh, Maxine was born in 1911. Uh, she started performing in the 1930s. She, I learned um, that she uh, and her singing partner were... Uh, the first black jazz stars to have their own weekly radio program. It was called Flow Gently, Sweet Rhythm. She also performed at the Cotton Club with Louis Armstrong. And uh, she did, has obviously done several other albums. She's an interesting person. She kind of retired from music, it sounds like, from what I read, from uh, the late 50s until about the late 60s, mostly, I think, to, to raise her children I think is what it said she was also a nurse also this information here uh, tells me that her home there in the Bronx her house uh, she allowed you know young uh, jazz up-and-comers to, to stay there and was very supportive of all the jazz people I think in the uh, 70s at some point she started performing again and recording so this is actually her very last album she died shortly after making this uh, these notes are really extensive and wh one of the reasons I really like her she seems like such a good person uh, these notes uh, have a story here about when they're recording this album uh, it, uh, it talks about well I can just imagine if uh, you know Barbara Streisand or Madonna were going to be recording an album you know they I'm sure when they show up to the studio they probably come in a limo and probably all the people at the studio have everything you know all set up for them. They probably have bodyguards and it's quite the entourage. Uh, on this one, uh, it says that uh, uh, we remember an afternoon recording date when the sidemen arrived on time, but the singer, Maxine, was tardy. Hers was no star entrance, however. When she finally walked in, a pixie in blue windbreaker, gray jumpsuit, sneakers, and baseball cap Maxine announced she was late because the subway was late. Uh, she talked off a quick, how are, you, how are you guys? And uh, they said, great, now that you're here. So I just love that, you know, arriving for the uh, recording session you know, via subway. I, I can't imagine Madonna taking a subway. Of course, I'm, you know, I'm sure she probably couldn't. She would be mobbed. But anyway, um, I thought that was a great story. Here is what the label looks like on that record. It's a Atlantic Jazz. Uh, I do have another record by Maxine. I've never really seen any vinyl by her. Uh, uh, like I said, I finally ordered uh, that one off of Discogs. I did see this one at a, I think at a used record store somewhere. Where this is Maxine singing with Father Hines in, I think, about 1970. Earl Hines. 
in um, in New York. The first couple songs on here are just him playing piano, and then she comes out. This is good. Uh, this is interesting. It looks like it cost two dollars and fifteen cents when it was new. Maybe that's a used price. I don't even know what that means. Four thirteen seventy two is the date on that. This one has a very cool label. Chiroscuro. So anyway, I uh, uh, was glad that I did uh, listen to this and become more familiar. Uh, a time when that came in handy for me was when I was uh, staying at the Waldorf Astoria in New York in October of 2001 for work. I was able to stay there because there weren't many people traveling in October of 2001. I came back one day after work to the you know, the lobby bar and was having a cocktail. That There was a woman there playing you know, cocktail jazz piano, I guess, and she... Uh, uh, asked if I had a request, and I s just off the top of my head, I said, time after time, which is the fourth song on side two. She replied, I love that song, and she started playing it. So I was glad I had one for her, because uh, when I'd actually moved to Nashville just before that, I went to a bar here in Nashville, country bar. Um, I was sitting basically at the uh, stage, you know, you put your drink on the stage, and the woman who was performing that night asked me if I had a request. And I was completely speechless, so I could not come up with anything. I'm not that familiar with country music. If I had a little bit more time to think about it, I would have said, you ain't woman enough to take my man. But I couldn't come up with that. But at the Waldorf Story, I was able to come up with one, so that was good. The songs on here, they're all good. I love the whole album. I, I just, I, I love every song on here. Uh, they're all, the music is all written by Julie Stein. So the words, uh, Sunday, words by Ned Miller. Just in Time, Betty Comden, Adolph Green. Saturday Night, The Loneliest Night of the Week, Sammy Kahn. It tells me over here that she had a sort of a partnership with Sammy Kahn. That they had several hit songs together. Uh, Dance Only With Me, Betty and Adolph again. It's been a long, long time, Sammy. I Don't Want to Walk Without You, words by uh, Frank Lesser. Bye Bye Baby, words by Leo Robin. Killing Time by Carolyn Lee. That is a song that was written more in the early 80s. It's a really, really nice song. Um, Talking to Yourself is really one of my favorite songs on here. The lyric is by uh, Betty Comden, Adolph Green. Again, that is a song, I think that's a song about, you know, basically if you don't, if you don't open your heart to someone, you're going to be talking to yourself. I guess because you won't have anyone else to talk to. So a really good song. Uh, Papa Won't You Dance With Me, words by Sammy Kahn. That. Probably my least favorite song on the album, but it's still good. Things We Did Last Summer, lyric by Sammy Kahn. The Beach Boys did a version of that. You may be familiar with it. I've heard that song before, Sammy Kahn. You Say You Care, Leo Robin. Distant Melody by Betty Comden, Adolph Green. And Together, Where Will We Go by Stephen Sondheim. So that's it. I just wanted to show this record because, like I say, I've, I've never heard anybody else discuss uh, Maxine Sullivan, and I, I think she would be someone that a lot of people would really enjoy listening to, particularly, like I say, if you're maybe just starting to listen to jazz, or if you want to become more familiar with the, the Great American Songbook, or if you're already really familiar with jazz and you know all those songs in the Great American Songbook, but you haven't heard this album, I think you'll enjoy it. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching.